Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hello, my name is Olivia Brown and I am currently a fourth year undergraduate student at UCLA studying anthropology, and today we are going to be talking about the difference between proximate explanations and ultimate explanations. Now, if you look up these terms online, I admit it can be a little bit fuzzy. So I'm going to share with you guys that online definition and then break it down a little bit and tell you guys the things that I think you actually need to know. So according to Google, ultimate explanations are concerned with the fitness consequences of a trait or behavior and whether it is or is not selected. In contrast, proximate explanations are concerned with the mechanisms that underpin the trait or behavior. That is how it works. Now this, I just don't think it actually gets at the core of the difference between approximate and ultimate explanations for things. And the easiest way that I tend to think about the difference between whether or not something is approximate explanation or an ultimate explanation is timeline. So ultimate explanations tend to have a lot to do with the evolutionary timeline of how an individual or a certain behavior got to be where they are today. And on the other hand, you have proximate explanations, which are very immediate. You're not looking at many generations before you. You're looking at what's happening right now to either cause an individual to have that behavior or have that phenotypic appearance. So now let's break them down a little bit further. I'm gonna be starting with proximate and then we'll get into ultimate. So proximate explanation or proximate causation is the immediate explanation for why something is happening. Now, sometimes this can be your genes, right? So what are your genes saying right now that cause you to look a certain way or do a different thing, but can also have a lot to do with the immediate situation. So what are the circumstances of the situation that lead an individual to do a certain thing? Now, ultimate explanation or ultimate causation has a lot to do with the evolutionary reasons that a certain individual might look or act a certain way. Now these kinds of explanations acknowledge that things don't just happen overnight. It took many, many generations to get to where an individual or a species is at that point in time. And often it's the byproduct of many, many years of ancestors having interacted with different predators and mating with different people or species, I guess, animals. I think you know what I mean. Either way, if you guys are ever presented with the question, is this proximate or is this an ultimate explanation? The first thing you should be thinking about is how far back this explanation extends. If it extends really far back in time, it's probably ultimate. And if it's talking about what's happening right now or doesn't even necessarily reference time, that's proximate. So now to solidify everything that I've just said, I wanna use a very common example from evolutionary biology. I apologize if you've heard this example before, but I do think it really will nail in anything that you might not understand at this point, And that is the famous peppered moths. So peppered moths are this species of moth that are native to England, I believe. And generally speaking, for simplicity's sake, there are two phenotypes, right? Two different appearances. One of them is a very white cream looking moth. And the other one is a very dark, like black looking moth. All right. Those are the two different appearances, black and white. Now at one point in time, years ago, the white peppered moth was actually the most common phenotype. So when you were to look around, the most common one that you would see is this white peppered moth. But of course there's variation. And so the other phenotype was the black moth is just less common. Now enter the 1800s, we have the industrial revolution and what happens? There's soot everywhere and the trees that these moths would land on actually started changing color because they were covered in soot. So these trees, which were originally a rather light outside, became dark. So what happened is it was actually easier for these black peppered moths to blend in with the environment. So you can imagine that after this change in the environment happens, the actual fitness of the different phenotypes of these moths starts to change, right? The black ones, it's easier for them to blend in. So they might actually have more reproductive success. And so after many years, what actually happened is there was a shift from the prevalence of the phenotypes. And basically what I mean by this is instead of having majority white moths um, and minority black moths, you have a switch. You have a majority black moths and a minority the white moths. Now let's start with understanding what a proximate explanation for these black peppered moths taking over, right? The proximate explanation for these moths being black is the genes at play, right? There's genes that send a genetic code that basically say, hey, moth, you're gonna be a black moth, right? That's, that's all that's happening right there. There's an immediate cause, these genes that's making the moth 
black. Now, if we're gonna look at this from the ultimate perspective, right, what had to happen over many generations for this to be the outcome, for the black moths to be the ones that take over? Now, because the black moths were actually better able to blend in with their environment, they actually had a higher chance of survival and therefore a higher chance of making it to those reproductive years and having offspring. And then of course, these dark genes, these black genes are gonna get transmitted into the next generation of those peppered moths. Now, I hope that example was able to maybe make things more clear for you, ultimate long period of time, many generations, proximate what's happening right now. Now, I hope this video was at least a little bit helpful in your understanding of the difference between proximate and ultimate causation. Again, as a biological anthropology major, this comes up all the time, and it definitely took me a little while to really hone in what those big differences are. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions about this or just anthropology in general, and I look forward to seeing you guys in another anthropology video next Sunday. <laughs> All right, you guys. Bye.